And now let's go to Germany, where Ernst Heinkel was desperately trying to get rich. They say that Ernst Heinkel hated the Nazis, and they would be completely wrong. He was one of the first to realize how colossal the profit from their war preparations could be, especially uh, the revival of the German Air Force. He quickly set himself a goal to make the words Luftwaffe and Heinkel sound like synonyms. That would clearly make him Ernst Heinkel, the richest and most powerful aircraft businessman in Europe, and possibly in the whole world. But those plans would always fail. First, he created the Heinkel HE 111. He almost got it right. But then Hitler suddenly wanted all the bombers to be able to dive bomb. Out of nowhere came the team from Junkers, the worst rivals of Heinkel and presented the U-88 that became the most mass-produced two-engined aircraft of the Luftwaffe. Okay, better luck next time. Heinkel switched to one-engine dive bombers and got outsmarted by Junkers again. Fine, screw the bombers completely. Here's a one-engine fighter for you, Mr. Hitler, the HE-112. And you know who gets in the way this time? No, not Junkers. Willi Messerschmitt himself with his BF-109. Heinkel tried to fight this fight and created the HE-100. But it could only be called a royal fiasco. Ernst Heinkel was constantly out of luck. There was only one area left that he could succeed in. A strategic bomber. Why? Because Goering had already announced Hitler's position on that one. In the coming war, Germany would not need an aircraft like this, so no need creating them. But Heinkel knew. Germany would surely need it, even if it didn't realize it yet. Of course, the projects of all the Ural bombers were closed, but there was a way out. He needed to create an aircraft that was de jour a two-engine bomber. But in reality, the engine on this one wouldn't be typical. It would be a paired power plant, also known as the Daimler-Benz 606, and later 610. Now, there would still only be two propellers, so technically it would be a two-engined aircraft. The fact that each propeller was powered by two power plants, well, Hitler didn't need to know this technological boring stuff, right? The problem was, Heinkel wasn't the only smart man in the industry. Messerschmitt has already launched his ME261 Adolfein with the same engine solution. Heinkel needed to hurry, but he couldn't. The HE177, also known as the Greif, turned out to be the most technically complicated aircraft in the history of the German aircraft industry. Its creators had to make a lot of unusual and difficult decisions. They'd even taken out a heavy fire barrow behind the engine mount, just to make the aircraft able to bomb from a flat dive. It was a huge mistake, but at the time, it passed unnoticed. Of course, the Blitzkrieg failed and turned into a war of attrition. Heinkel had finally found his luck. The Luftwaffe generals had realized how much they needed a strategic bomber and he was the only one with a more or less finished prototype. Now, he was able to dictate his own rules on how a bomber should look. The Luftwaffe could only agree and beg to give it to them as quickly as possible. And Heinkel did. For a lot of money, of course. The Greif made it to mass production, even with all of the fire safety equipment lacking because the Luftwaffe needed anything that could bomb British and Soviet cities and manufacturing. But what could a thousand Greifs do against many thousands of American and British strategic bombers? Those had already turned most of Germany into dust. In his underground bunker in the final days of his life, 
Hitler finally understood why one needs a strategic bomber. As for Heinkel, he was hastily siphoning his money off to Switzerland and preparing a story on how he hated the Nazis.